Uh, for our followers and for those of you who are viewing us for the first time, it was back in March of this year when we kicked off the first session of a webinar series on the diversity in cybersecurity. Uh, diversity and inclusion still remains our core aspects of our cultural transformation that help us fulfill our mission to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Our guest today is Christopher Romeo Munoz. Chris was born in Rincon, La Vega, Dominican Republic and grew up in Washington Heights, Harlem uh, in New York City. Uh, he comes from a less privileged environment, one where unemployment and crime were at their all time high. But apart from the being brought up in a single parent household, as Chris mentioned, uh, there was no proper education nor any guidance to walk in the right direction. Chris is a great colleague of mine. He's a program manager with Cloud Security Engineering Organization here at uh, Microsoft. Uh, besides his security role, Chris's mission is to provide guidance and active mentorship to underrepresented communities. And without further ado, I would like to welcome Chris and we'll pass on the mic here shortly to him after we conduct this polling and see where everybody has joined us today from. So I am going to post the link so you guys can connect to our polling and just to see where everybody's joining from. Well, we got somebody from Dominican Republic already, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That is awesome to hear. There you go. I, we see some Pacific Northwest folks from Redmond, I'm guessing. East Coast, not too far in Florida. This is awesome. Welcome everyone. Got quite quite a bit from the from the other side of the pond, like we say, the Atlantic, the other side of Atlantic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Welcome everyone. Thanks again. All right, all right. Well, thanks again, Valen and the entire team. I truly appreciate um the opportunity to talk about my story and who i am and where i come from and my passion for mentorship and also coaching and also apprenticeship uh today i want to talk about how do we actually encourage the young talent and how do we spark early digital skills to achieve long-term inclusion and belonging i truly appreciate microsoft and the entire team for having a series like this one where, where we talk about diversity in cybersecurity. As Valen just mentioned, my, my name is Christopher Romeo Munoz. I, I am a program manager, part of the Cloud and Artificial Intelligence Division. And today I am delighted to talk about this topic. And the reason why is because as part of Microsoft, one of the core aspects that we have when it comes to our, our cultural transformation that helps us fulfill our mission, as everyone knows, is to empower every single person and every single organization on this planet to achieve more. In order to do that, we need to have um, you know, folks from diverse backgrounds and we need to also have diverse perspectives. So today again, I am delighted to be here and we are gonna have fun and you are gonna get to know who I am. And you know, my purpose of you know of why I'm here, part of this earth, is to you know empower and to also provide mentorship to others. You know, for today, we're gonna talk about who I am, a background of where I come from and what's the why behind all this. You know, why do I care so much about diversity and inclusion? Why do I care about, you know, making sure that folks that come from underrepresented communities like the one that I come from get the right highlight? And also what's Microsoft view, right? What is the entry point and the opportunity that we provide here at Microsoft? And then I will also talk about the various educational programs that I've been a part of that the whole school behind is to encourage the young talent, to motivate, to empower, and to also spark early digital skills. And then lastly, we'll open it up for Q&A, which should be fun as well. So a bit about who I am. 
as Valen just mentioned, I am from La Vega, Rincón in Dominican Republic, a developing country. I come from a, a environment where kids don't even have the proper nutrition to even grow, right? If you see a 16 year old teenager, you're probably thinking that he's 12 because again, they don't have the proper resources to grow, to, you know, to nurture and to be healthy, right? That's where I come from. And that's where my hunger, that is, that is where my fire to become a better person comes from and the fire to become a leader also comes from as well. I am super honored to say that I, I, I now have six years working at Microsoft, two years part of the customer experience team where I've been solely focused on our top security products here at Microsoft. As part of this journey, I've been focused on customer evidence, which I work deeply with the marketing team to make sure that we get customer stories from the customers that we work with. Uh, when it comes to cybersecurity, and to be honest, where, where I come from, you don't really see someone working in cybersecurity. You don't see someone working in Microsoft. It's really hard to make it out where I come from. And as Valen just mentioned, I come from an environment that is infested when it comes to drugs, gangs, and also violence. And there's honestly a lack of guidance. Part of this webinar, I am going to be 100% transparent and 100% real on the environment that I come from and how that molded my mindset to do the things that I do today. Uh, part of cybersecurity right now, I focus on UEBA, so that is user entity analytics and also threat hunting. I am very passionate about those areas when it comes to cybersecurity. And then on top of that, I am also a blogger and a speaker. I love to blog about, you know, the products that we have here at Microsoft and how they help enterprises modernize their security operations. And I am also an avid speaker. I traveled around the world thanks to Microsoft and the opportunities that they have provided to me, uh, you know, as a speaker at different at different conferences, including Microsoft Ignite and even some of the internal Microsoft conferences, including uh, Microsoft Ready as well. So again, this is just a quick, um, you know, bio of who I am, but let's turn it up a notch and talk about the fun facts about me. I hey, attend hey, Chris. College yeah, look, I would like to interrupt just quickly here with some uh, some questions because uh, so far so good, but uh, maybe yeah. we can just uh, uh, <laughs> I, I'm just curious, you know, how did coming from the Dominican Republic and from Harlem, New York impact your views on success? That's a really good question. Again, again, thanks for bringing that up because that, that's really going to, you know, mold this conversation here today. You know, coming from coming from the Dominican Republic, you know, it basically ingrained um that seed within me that i had no choice when it comes to success you know success was not an, was not a option uh for me and i knew that because of the circumstances that we had around us and the environment that i came from i knew that you know when i grew up i had to become the person that can often that can lead that can grow that can bring back to my community you know the right mindset that we should predicate and also the right concepts that we should also adopt as well. So I always knew that I wanted to be that person, um, but my environment was the one that, that really forced that mindset within me. You know, coming from Harlem, New York City, you know, after after we came to the Dominican Republic, we, we came to the Harlem, Washington Heights area. It was tough. It was really, really tough. I grew up in a single uh, parent household. I, I had to work at the age of 11 years old. You know, so I had to, I had to get that grit and that hardworking mindset going. So that really predicated my, my mindset and my views on success that I didn't really have an option. I didn't have an option. I, I wanted to see my family succeed. I wanted to see my community succeed. And I knew, I knew that my environment had, had, had the talent and has the DNA to become better, right? It's not that we don't have the talent nor the DNA, it's just that we don't have the you know the right and appropriate guidance and and you know that's the guidance that you know i am bringing to my community today so that's how you know it really impacted my views on, on success did you actually ever you know always wanted to work in tech or you know how did this happen <laughs> yeah really good question it's, it's insane because my mom you know she was working two jobs at the moment i was 10 years old she bought us the first computer and I, you know, I actually, I, you know, I turned the, you know, I actually torn the, the computer down and, and I actually re, like, like I actually rebuilt it. So I, I, I always had that, 
that appetite for tech. And even back in the Dominican Republic, one of the one of the companies that you would only see out there, you know, was Microsoft. So the, the, the Microsoft logo, I always gravitated to that. And I told my mom when I was 10 <laughs> years old, yeah, I, I swear. And she knows the date and everything of, of, of when I told her that when I grew up, I want to work for Microsoft and here I am. Tell How me. cool is that? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, so a couple of fun facts about me and, you know, things that definitely molded who I am and the, di the different experiences that now because of those experiences, I had those habits. I attended college at the age of 15. I was very, very young when I went to college. Surprisingly, when we migrated from the Dominican Republic to the US, um, they actually bumped me up a grade. That's actually unusual. Usually when when someone comes from another country, they deduct your grade. So you actually go down. But I had, you know, I had good grades. I was always proactive in school and they actually bumped me up a grade. So my brother and I were always at the, you know, at the same school grade. So I always had people that were two to three years older than me. And honestly, I am fortunate that I got that opportunity because I learned so much because of those different experiences. I played baseball as well. Baseball was my first love. It's, 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 it's honestly the sport that taught me discipline, that taught me, you know, that 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 consistency really gets you somewhere, right? Consistency is a critical element to, to success. And I got the opportunity to play one year of pro baseball as well. Lastly, and this one I have to hone in on, I am the first person to graduate college in, uh, in my family, both bachelor's and, and also master's degree. And this is big. And the reason why I put here woohoo is because where I come from, people don't even graduate high school. Graduating high school, you know, people are are celebrating, right? Let alone graduating college and, you know, and, and, and also getting a degree from a graduate program. So this definitely paved the way for the younger folks in my family. Now everyone is a college graduate and even my mom as well. Um, you know, she's she's thinking of going back to college to, you know, continue her career. Um, the reason why she didn't continue her career was because, you know, I was inside her belly. So for that reason, that was a big blocker for her. Um, but this definitely hits home. And this is one of the things that I want to talk about today is that oftentimes people that come from where I come from, we are the first ones to do everything. Right. I am. I am the first one to graduate college. I am the first one in my entire family and almost in my community, to be frank, to work at a corporation like Microsoft, I am the first person in my family to present at you know these different conferences that we go to. I'm the first person to even have a 401k account, right? So things like that is what I really want to hone in on and talk about how, what can we do as a community, part of tech, part of cybersecurity, what can we do to empower every, every single person to do more and how every single experience that we go through Every single wisdom, I mean, every single drop of wisdom that we have, that can change the life of someone out there. Cool. Uh, so, how impactful was uh, being the first college graduate for your family and as well as for your community that you mentioned? Yeah, I mean, when I first graduated college, I went to Michigan State University, graduated uh, class of 2015, had a phenomenal experience there, learned, learned a ton too. Um, you know, I was a New York City kid, you know, and I went to Michigan. To me, it was just very, I mean, it, it was the countryside of the U.S. to me, you know, back then. And um, this, this was very, very important in a very paramount uh, stage of my life. And also for, for my family, when I was at the graduation, I honestly couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that someone from Harlem, from 160th, um can graduate college and can do big things you know it's, it's just you know this was honestly what my family needed and what my community needed and you know thanks to those experiences today i am in a position to give back to my community which i'm going to talk about the different programs that i am a part of both inside of microsoft and also outside of microsoft you know to change the paradigm when it comes to my community Excellent. So where it started, and I, I definitely want to talk about, you know, my experience here at Microsoft and the, the, the different roles that I've been a part of. So when I graduated college and I, and I came to Microsoft, I was a consultant. So as a consultant, I will work with enterprises to position 
these different uh, services across the environment. Here, I was working more on devices and mobility. I was deploying Windows 10. I was using System Center, also Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. You know, all the all these things were new to me. Like I, I'm telling you, it, it was very, very, very new. You know, uh, throughout my experience as a consultant, I, I got the Gold Club Award, which I'm honored to say that. Uh, after that, I went into being a pre, a premier field engineer. As you can see, every single role that I had here, I went there because I actually wanted to 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 strengthen. And I wanted to, you know, have the mindset of learn it all, which is actually, a, you know, one of the mindsets that we have here at Microsoft. And one of the concepts that we value is that instead of being a know it all, you have to be a learn it all. So having that appetite for learning was what really got me from being a consultant to becoming a, a premier field engineer. So as a premier field engineer, I was there more of you know hosting workshops. I was traveling all around the world. You know, presenting at these different conferences, and there I was working more on enterprise mobility and security, and I was also focusing on the on mobile device management and also mobile application management. During this stage, did this really, um, you know, um, got me into cybersecurity? I wanted to be in cybersecurity. The reason why I did not start with cybersecurity was because of fear, and I I I also want to talk about fear today. How Oftentimes, the things that 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 really scare us, those are the things that we have to run to, because those are, uh, you know, there is where your growth really lies. So I always wanted to become a, a program manager. I was just really scared about it. You know, I was scared about the responsibility. I was scared about, you know, all the different things that a PM had to do. Now I'm I am happy to say that. Uh, once I joined the program manager team or the, you know, the cloud and artificial intelligence division, I started off working on Azure Defender and now I solely focus on Microsoft Sentinel. As you can see here, we, you know, you have so many different products that I've been working on. Actually, I, I think I've worked on every single security product that Microsoft has created, which I'm super happy to say that. And on top of that, on the left hand side here, uh, these are all the different certifications that I've been able to uh, get because of Microsoft and the different um, engagements that I've been a part of. But because I changed my mindset and I started to run towards my fears, that's what that's what really started to grow for me, you know, personal uh, development and also here, uh, in, you know, as part of my career here at Microsoft. Uh, Chris, you mentioned this, you know, this was all new experience for you. Yeah. I'm just wondering, did you have any uh, mentors during these uh, shifts in roles? Yeah, yeah, so I definitely did. So I, I, you know, this is why mentorship and coaching or, or, or having a mentor is so critical because that's really going to help you out, right? And and this is why us, you know, folks that are that are in position, we should be mentors. You know, we should have mentees. We should we should coach. We should pave the way for others and tell them how they can actually avoid the mistakes that we made or even learn from the mistakes that we made. Um, so I definitely had uh, a couple of different mentors. One is Chris Jackson, very known across the cybersecurity spectrum. May he rest in peace. He honestly got me into cybersecurity and, and he was the person that pushed me into getting into cybersecurity because he knew that I had love for cybersecurity. I just didn't have I would say the confidence to get into it, right? So having a mentor, in my opinion, is super, super critical. And we are going to get to, uh, to 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 that in a second of how of how important it is for us to give back to the community and ensure that those young adults that are now up up and coming, you know, we need to pave the way for them and we need to come back and give them the guidance that they need. So background. A, b a bit of what the why is. Um, as I mentioned, you know, you've heard about where I come from, the environment that I come from. I actually want to show you. I actually want to show you a um, a video here. This is where I come from, the Dominican Republic, uh, in Vincon. This is the hometown that I grew up in. As you can see, not a very pretty sight here. You know, people have homes here made out of wood. You know, they don't have a proper ceiling. To the point where if it rains, like you, you'll definitely get wet. So those are actually my my little nephews that I have here. And this was back in 2020 when I went back into my city when you know I donated money uh, for schools. And, and, and actually, I am super proud to say that, you know, folks and kids from my hometown, I pay for this school program and I and, and I am the one that donates money for their education. 
So this is where I come from. It gives you a visual of the environment that I come from and um, um, the different barriers that I had to overcome. Uh, <laughs> um, aside from that, I want to talk about, you know, once we migrated from the Dominican Republic to New York City, um, in Washington Heights in Harlem, there's lack of guidance. These are some of the barriers that kids have to um, overcome. I come from a single family household, as I said, I was working at the age of 11 years old, so I know what hard work is and, and, and how hard work could definitely take you places. Every single person that, that from my community is the first one to break a generational curse. They're the first one to either graduate high school, graduate college, get that first big job. So there's a lot of uncertainty. As you go to these different stages in life, there's a lot of uncertainty. Why? Because you don't have that guidance. You don't have that context. I, I couldn't say I had a dad that was there to provide that guidance. So for that reason, I had to figure it out on my own, right? In in high school, in college, and things like that. So the you know the whole scope here is really to change the paradigm across you know across the world and also across these less privileged communities. So today I I do want to share a couple of different stats that I think will definitely hit home. When it comes to African American and minority ma uh, males, they only represent 2.2% of those working in STEM occupations. I do wanna highlight that lots of enterprises and corporations, they are investing in diversity and inclusion programs, which I definitely love that, but we definitely have a long way to go to normalize this, right? Now for females, African-American and minority females represent only 1.4% of those working in STEM occupations. I mean, this is, this is mind boggling, right? We have the DNA. You know, those folks from the, those less privileged communities, they have the DNA to be great. They just need the guidance and the coaching to get there. So today I want to talk about what's our view and commitment when it comes to Microsoft. And here I have a quote uh, from our CEO, and he preaches that we need to ensure that our culture of inclusion is a top priority for everyone. It starts with our values of respect, integrity and accountability. Each of us must be able to thrive in diverse teams. Every manager must be able to attract, retain, and grow employees of all backgrounds. This is certainly true at Microsoft and also more broadly. It is a new baseline for manager excellence across industries and across the globe. And the reason why I put this here is because I want to I want to normalize it. And again, this is very true that every single person has a opportunity here at Microsoft. Every 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 um, young adult that comes from a underrepresented community, they do have an opportunity to work at a large corporation or graduate from college or, you know, become the next CEO one day. So, so this is definitely the vision that we have, you know, behind diversity and inclusion. And oftentimes it's not just a fleeting trend or a buzzword, but it's rather a natural development worthy of celebration. We need this in order for us to be successful um not just across uh you know human beings but also across business as well we need diversity and we need to ensure that everyone feels belong like they belong uh at microsoft and also at other corporations and to be honest when i when i when i, when I first came to microsoft i didn't feel like i could relate to people i didn't feel like people came from my background or went through the different things that i went through and that's honestly one of the challenges that i had you know getting accustomed to the corporate world um and 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 actually finding my niche uh in the corporate world as well so i definitely want to highlight that this is definitely a necessity and we are in dire need for diversity and inclusion so so far we, we we've talked about who i am where i come from um our vision here at microsoft you know the different experiences that i had to go through growing up and that really molded who i am now let's talk about what is the holistic approach or the educational programs that i am proud to say that i've been a part of that can help us, one, encourage the young talent. And we do this here at Microsoft by providing scholarships, providing experiences and internships to engage, nurture and encourage young talent. So we have a lot of different programs here at Microsoft internally that our internal folks are here to provide and also to coach to ensure that we have a better tomorrow. The first thing here is youth sport uh, analysts. And let me just quickly get the brush real quick. This is me. I, I believe I, this was my second year at Microsoft. And I as soon as I got into Microsoft, I wanted to find out 
what are the programs that we have that I can give back to my community, right? That I can, you know, coach someone or if not, I can mentor someone. So Youth Sport Panelists is a nonprofit organization of student athletes. And we have an annual uh, panel where basically, you know, we have the student athletes, they come to the office and we provide them that one on one experience that someone that looks like you is here working at Microsoft. And honestly, this this right here is super, super criti critical for me. I, I make sure that I have time for this because it really means a lot to me to be able to give back. Because why? Because when I when I see them, I see myself. Right. I was a student athlete in, in, in high school. Right. I needed guidance. I needed to see someone of my skin color, of where I come from, you know, being successful and and, and being able to provide that role model figure to these kids means means the world to me. Right. And being able to go into a panel and tell them that I'm from Harlem, that I'm from Washington Heights, that I come from the Dominican Republic. And right now I'm working at Microsoft and just giving them the confidence that you can do it as well. I think to me is monumental. That's very interesting, Chris. I don't know about this, but I'm just <laughs> wondering, there's gotta be, you know, working with these kids. I'm yeah. just wondering what, what type of questions were, would they ask you? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, the questions are <laughs> how much money you make. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> how much money do you make? You know, how did you get here? What are the challenges that you go through? Uh, you know, a common question is, you know, like, what's your day to day like? Do you work remote? They love when you hear when they hear that, you know, that you can actually work from home. Um, you know, they they ask me questions when it comes to my, my my own baseball career and what did I do, you know, when I was in college to make sure that I was focused. Um, they even ask me questions when it comes to just discipline. Oh, oftentimes, you know, these kids have have trouble when it comes to discipline, when, when, when it comes to being consistent. So, I mean, the questions definitely, uh, you know, uh, are are very broad, but being able to provide that that additional context of you know who I am and how did I get here and alongside of the colleagues that we had there as part of the panel, who they are and the different roles that we have, I think is pretty critical. Uh, if you look at the panel here, and actually, uh, yeah, if you look at the panel here, I am the only person here that was focused on cybersecurity. So whenever I said, listen, I work in cybersecurity, that that was a big aha moment. Like, wow, like you work in cybersecurity, like what, what made you get into cybersecurity, right? So telling the why I got into cybersecurity and the impact that we can create here in cybersecurity is pretty critical. And what's great about this is that every single panel that I do, I have two to three students that they always stay in touch. And that to me is, is what I really love is that, you know, we're able to foster a relationship with them. You know, I have some that text me from, from, from time to time like, hey, I just finished um, junior year. Um, you know, can we have a one on one? And then I do hop on for a one on one to coach them and, and to provide them the guidance that they need. That is so cool. Why does this something like this matter to you so much? <clears throat> um, it matters so much. I mean, th th this right here is this right here is my purpose, my purpose in life, not just in Microsoft, but my purpose in life and why God brought me into life is to empower to make sure that I can instill confidence into others and make sure that I can pave the way for others and that I can go back into my community and make my community a better community. That's honestly why, and this is why I prioritize these events because I know that even the smallest advice, even the, even the smallest sentence that I, that I say or answer will definitely change your lives. And actually, uh, I've been going through these uh, different panels for about five years now. Out of the five years, I have five um, students that are going to go into uh, cybersecurity as their career. So, I mean, it's life changing conversations like these that I think is pretty critical and that can pave the right direction to someone that comes from where I come from. And, and what I said in the bio, you know, at the time where I came from, there was no sort of direction. So being able to actually provide direction to pave the way that right there is just you know, my, my, my purpose and why it matters to me. Yeah, very rewarding indeed. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. Um, another program that we do here is the Minority Student Day. Lovely, I mean, this is a lovely event. Um, this has been going on for quite some time. Actually, this event has been going on since 1992. We've run this annually since 1992. And this is a, a event in the Microsoft office and actually 
It runs across all the different offices that we have at Microsoft. And this is this event is put on by the Blacks at Microsoft or the BAM organization. And this is just to motivate local students that come from underrepresented communities that probably have never been in an office, to be completely honest. These kids, when they go into the Microsoft office, it feels like Christmas at the Microsoft office. We have over 500 students come to the Microsoft office and they learn about what we do. They learn about the technology that we're building. They're able to play with cool technologies like Cortana, like search, like blockchain, like blockchain uh, technology, like HoloLens. And the great thing is that this day, we have several different workshops in which, um, for example, they're able to create their first elevator pitch. Some don't even know what an elevator pitch is. So, so just to provide that information, which is going to be critical uh, for their future and being able to get them to practice their elevator pitch, I think is really, really cool. Uh, you know, we, we, we talk about personal brand, how critical it is to have a personal brand and how, that, how that's a critical element to your success. We, we go through different workshops that cover coding, right? So we, we help them code one line of HTML, just get them behind this technology. And actually one of the cool things that we do is that we do a, a one hour of code that focuses on Minecraft. Some of them may work on Minecraft, so whenever they hear these things, they honestly go crazy. They love to hear these things, right? They, 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 they definitely want to touch and feel the technology. And honestly, oftentimes, the reason why we don't have more minorities in STEM careers is because they're just not aware. They don't know about these different careers. They don't know what cybersecurity is and the impact that cybersecurity can have. They don't know that they can, you know, write code and they can develop these different games and, you know, things like that. So going through that is super, super critical. And uh, lastly, one of, the, one of the other workshops that we cover is on public speaking. Public speaking is the number one fear across the world. And we all know that public speaking is, is essential to someone's career. So we, we cover the recommended practices when it comes to public speaking, uh, um, um, speaking, some of them may be shy at the, uh, you know, at first, but just give them that that confidence that they can do it and things like that is super, super critical. So this is a day that I definitely look forward to every single year. Oh, cool. So with the minority student day, uh, <laughs> I'm just curious to know what type of workshops were you directly involved in? Really, really good question. Yeah, so I usually present on personal brand. Uh, I am also engaged in the coding workshops as well, where we, where we uh, you know, take them through what is coding and we talk about HTML, Python, you know, C Sharp and those different languages. Um, we even talk about me personally, I talk about uh, cybersecurity. So I have led uh, workshops where, you know, what what is cybersecurity? And we talk about, you know, um, security hygiene and the, and the things that they should do, you know, as young adults to, to protect their identity you know across the internet you know and, and and honestly it's in it's insane to to see the the, the uh, different reactions that we get once they actually find out what cybersecurity is and some already want to get into it right so aside from providing the workshops we actually pave the way uh for them to actually get into programs that can help them amplify that interest that they have in these different technologies cool Yep. And then lastly here, I have the BAM Summer Internship Program. Again, another event that's uh, or, or program that's put on by the Black Side Microsoft organization. The whole scope here is that we want you to get an insight of what is Microsoft. You know, why is our why is our mission to empower every single person in every single organization across the globe? Why? Why is that? Right. And also, aside from that, what products do we have? What's the impact that our products have? Right. So we cover this is a summer internship program where every single intern has a mentor, you know, so, so they receive mentorship and also coaching uh, from the IT professionals that currently work here at Microsoft. They learn about the different technologies and also what's the use case of, across the world. And they also get information when it comes to career paths. Oftentimes, by the end of the internship, they, they already got, you know, depending on what grade they're in, they already have full-time opportunities already lined up. So this is a really good entry point on how we can get folks from underrepresented communities to get into 
a corporation like Microsoft. And this right here is super, super critical because imagine you being the first person, you are honestly the only hope that your family has, right? To do, to do something, to do better. And you're part of an internship program with Microsoft where we're providing you the right guidance that you have and the opportunity to land, you know, to, to, to actually land the job at Microsoft. That right there is monumental. So all those pretty faces you see there, those are kids that that have faith, that have hope, and that have the DNA to be better and to be part of Microsoft as well. So just to cover some of the workshops that we do, we cover, as I said before, personal branding, we cover networking, we cover the world of Microsoft. Uh, digital advertising and in interviewing techniques. And this right here, I'm, I'm really, really passionate about because uh, these kids, they've probably never been in an interview. So they don't know how to operate in an interview, right? So being able to provide that context uh, and, and also recommend the practices when it comes to interviewing is super, super critical. And we do conduct mock interviews to be able to provide, you know, that coaching that they need to make sure that when they do get a, a, a interview, they are super effective. I'm just so proud that uh, Microsoft is able to <laughs> offer these uh, internship programs and for you mentoring them. Uh, yeah. This is great. Uh, I was wondering what uh, what are the responsible or what were the responsibilities of the mentor and uh, as well as curious to know the the relationship with the interns. Yeah, definitely. So responsibility of a mentor, we had to hold, you know, mentorship and coaching calls every single week. So we actually got the opportunity to meet with the interns and you honestly get pretty close with them. You get to know where they're, you know, where they're from. Um, like you really get to get personal with them. You know, they they give you information of, you know, what they're going through at the moment and you're there just to, you know, um, empower them. Right. You know, show them the way, you know, of how they can actually get through these different challenges. So, you know, it's super, super critical for us to do this. But on top of that, we are the ones that are conducting all these different interviews. If I conduct a mock interview, uh, I am the interviewer They're, You know, they're, they're, they're the interviewee. So things like that. Right. We are also there to provide uh, workshops. So as I said before, you know, personal branding, and even things like networking and also the uh, cybersecurity workshops, those were things that I led myself. Um, when it comes to the relationship, um, you know, we get to foster a deep relationship. We really get to know them, not just when it comes to their career uh, path and their interests, but who they are and maybe some of the things that, that, that they're going through at home or if not, you know, across the community. So, you know, it, uh, again, to me, this is a very rewarding experience. And, you know, so far Microsoft and, you know, thanks to the Black Side Microsoft organization, they do provide scholarships all the way from $15,000 to $50,000. So oftentimes these, these kids can actually go to school for free, you know, because of this program. So quickly, I just, I definitely want to show you what the Minority Student Day uh, looks like and you know, what's the experience and, you know, the different workshops uh, that we have. So this right here is a student day 2019 recap video of uh, the Minority Student Day. The lack of generational wealth that has historically existed means that our like, parents support all of our skills and desire to actually go to right? And even for those of us that do have that, there's a limited one way. There's a limited understanding, there's a limited desire. And so all of a sudden, as a black entrepreneur to reach the level that I'm at now and, and that some of my friends are at, you really do have to inevitably, despite your socioeconomic status, that's why you are going through a period where you economically suffer, right? And, and that, that shouldn't be that way because, you know, entrepreneurs of other definitions, they don't go through that, right? So that's why they can be who they are. You know, you can pay more full time, raise five, ten million dollars, and then you have to grab it because you don't love this, right? Yeah, so I just showed you the different workshops, the interactions that we have uh, part of this great event. Um, aside from just encouraging the young talent, we also have uh, different educational programs that I've been a part of myself to actually spark these digital skills. As I said before, some of these kids don't even know about these different careers. They don't know about these different uh, you know, set of technologies. They've never you know, touched or even felt 
these different technologies. So this is all about, you know, in, in encouraging and building early, te you know, te technology skills across girls and children from underrepresented communities. And the first one that I have to talk about here is DigiGirls. So DigiGirls is another program. They have camps, they have hackathons, they have so many different great things. And the whole scope, the whole uh, scope of this program is to provide for middle school and, and high school girls the opportunities to learn more about not just the careers at Microsoft, but just technology in general. So they get to dive deeper into artificial intelligence, gaming, app development, and even more. And the great thing about this is that we're providing free training to you know middle school and high school girls that are now understanding what they want to do when they grow up. So we're honestly molding the way so that they can get into 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 a STEM career. And I am super honored to say that right now, uh, you know, this program gives tech training to high school girls, and this has impacted over 54,000 girls in 47 countries. So that right there is what we're doing uh, part of DigiGirls here at Microsoft. Next here is MenCode. So MenCode is another uh, program. This, this is actually a one day program. Uh, it, is, it is a conference where we, where we provide similar educational and, and, uh, and also life skills training. Everything from artificial intelligence to blockchain to app development to web development as well. And it's pretty cool because out of this program, one young uh, man, he actually created his own web development agency due to the uh, due to the skills that he was able to acquire through Menco. So again, it's all about empowerment, all about, you know, getting people to, you know, be cognizant of what's out there and also paving the way, you know, because of our, of our own wisdom for them to do more. This next slide here, I do want to talk about something that I do outside of Microsoft and um, the work that I'm super passionate about. Uh, and that also includes, aside from paving the way for, you know, STEM careers, but also, you know, bringing financial literacy back into less privileged communities. So I have founded a company or a organization called Level Up Enterprises. And this summer, we held our first brunch in Harlem, New York City. And we have a, re a, a really vibrant community of people that are interested and that want to do better. And they're all about bringing that uh, that, that, that that experience back home. So this is just a quick a quick um, video of what we had here. So this was a brunch in Harlem, New York City. We held different presentations. We talked about, and that's me right there. We talked about um, you know the different programs that we have, you know, to get people to invest, to get people, uh, you know, to ignite different careers. Me personally, I am coming into, I am actually igniting a program which is going to be called Getting Into Cybersecurity, and it's all about, you know, getting folks from less privileged communities to get into cybersecurity and that's going to give them a whole curriculum that they can follow to acquire the right skill sets that they need to be able to work and you know across any single corporation so these folks are some of the members part of the very community that that we are currently building in new york city uh, we do hope to make this a global organization in which we can go to different countries and, and different states and you know to do similar events and to really inspire and motivate people uh, to do more and to in, in, instill that seed that they can actually acquire more and do more. And um, because of these different educational programs and the work that I've been doing inside and, and also outside of Microsoft, I'm super happy to say that I've been able to get some features across different press or, or different outlets. So Fox, Yahoo Finance, Entrepreneur, Influencer, uh, Market Watch. Those are just some of the different uh, outlets that I've been able to acquire, and you know I'm super honored to say that I've been able to get uh, press because of, of the upliftment and the work and the you know the passion that I have uh, for this type of work. So lastly, I do have a takeaway um, slide, and it's just three simple, three simple bullet points here. The first one is, you do not need a title to lead and empower. And this this here is super powerful. The reason why is because oftentimes individuals we wait for us to be provided or or even rewarded a title for us to lead and, and also empower. You do not need a title. Just your wisdom and your experiences can be valuable to someone else. Your wisdom, your experience can greatly mold the career path 
for someone or it can even change their life. As I've said before, because of, of these different educational programs, we have kids and young adults that now want to get into cybersecurity. They now want to start coding. They want to start their own company, right? So things like that, uh, we could definitely um, provide back into any community. So you do not need a title to lead and empower. Oftentimes, I see people that we try to downplay the wisdom and experience that we actually go through, right? When we when we should actually highlight and we should amplify it. Your wisdom, every single person that, that's listening to this webinar, your wisdom, your experiences, everything that you go through is, a, is extremely valuable and we need to hear it. Your, your voice, your story, just how I am telling mine should be heard. And oftentimes we may uh, refrain from doing that from, you know, be, because of personal reasons. But I just wanna say that your wisdom and your experience is gold to someone else, just has you know, the wisdom that my mentors provided to me, that was gold to me because I was completely lost. You know, when I came to Microsoft, I was lost. I, I, everything was new to me, but because of the great mentors that I had and, and the different coaches that I had, you know, I was able to find a way because of their wisdom and also their experiences. Lastly, we are better together. We are all better together. We are stronger together. We are we, we are a driving force if we collaborate and we work together. And that's all what that is all of what we're doing here at Microsoft is making sure that despite of where you come from, despite of the color of your skin, we are able to work together, you know, to you know to fight the bigger mission, which is to empower every single person to do more. Right. And to motivate and to go into those local communities to, you know, provide a hint of inspiration to a young kid that comes from a, you know, a, 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 a environment that is infested by drugs, gangs or violence. You know, together we could definitely get to that mission that we want to do and we, and we can ensure that every single person across this globe has the right path and has the right um, structure to be able to become someone one day. So with that being said, that is my um, that is my uh, slide deck of what I wanted to, sh to share today. I am more than happy to uh, open it up for any questions. Chris, this is awesome. The the theme, the theme of the instant feedback we got today is courageous. That's the word courageous we're seeing. So th <laughs> thank you so much for being courageous and coming out here to share your story with us and with our community. This is indeed great. Thank you also for answering all the questions I had for you. Yeah. And uh, let's just uh, give it a minute here. Uh, so far, we've just got you know great feedbacks and no questions. Uh, but let's just uh, give it a, maybe a minute here. Excellent. Perfect. One question I had, Chris, is up, you know you talked about the importance of mentorship <laughs> and a lot of this wisdom that was passed on. Are there any particular pieces that were uh, uh, of insight that were particularly influential to you or any particular moments where that made you change the direction you were going? Oh, that's a really good question. That's a really, really good question. Yeah, like for example, when I had Chris Jackson as, as my mentor, just on how even learning, like, you know, like he taught me, um, you know, that whenever you learn something new, it could be a technology, it could be something you really have to understand what's the why of that technology, right? So he really, he really molded the way on how I interact and how I position the technology that I work on today with my different customers, right? So even just small things like that, even wisdom on how do you present? Even with someone, you know, he 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 actually taught me how to present. He actually sat down with me. I remember he was in London. Um, he had a conference in London, and when he got back, he told me, "Listen, fly to Chicago. I want you to come here. I want you to become a key presenter, right?" And I flew to Chicago. He sat down with me. He 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 taught me the way on how to actually conduct a presentation. Even things like how do you even open up a call? I'm sure that people where I come from, they don't even know how to do that. Why? Because they don't have that education. They, they, don't, they don't have that guidance. So it could be the smallest thing, the smallest thing, or even how do you handle, you know, a toxic situation with, with a customer, right? If, we, if, we're, if we're applying this, you know, to, to, you know, what we do every single day, even things like that could definitely help, right? So even the smallest thing when it comes to wisdom or even how to interview. I mean, it's so many different things that we need that honestly, the world needs help with that oftentimes we don't even share it and I think that us, if we share it and we amplify it, we, we could definitely go further.
great. Thank you. You bet. you bet. Thank you, Chris. And uh, I know you're focused on the uh, on the presentation here, but I would like to read this uh, last uh, feedback that we got. It's <laughs> it's a bit long, but it's a good one. Right, I yeah. appreciate you telling your story. I am a Latino from Brooklyn, New York, and I can relate to parts of your story. Yeah. Congratulations on your continued success and love to see the kids who uh, people have conduct, uh, counted out, make an impact and a difference in this world in ways that people did not think was possible. Tech has a place for everybody. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for you know, uh, sparing this time uh, again, Chris, with us and being our honored guest. Uh, thank you very much to our continuous supporters in this community. And um, uh, I, if you noticed that we made some changes to our landing pages, so now we have security uh, community, aka dot ms slash security community, as well as uh, aka dot ms slash security webinars, all combined. And within there, you'll also be able to find uh, many uh, vast uh, uh, in, uh, good information that we had had in the past. It's just that we have combined it and tried to make it more streamlined for you guys. And uh, we uh, we still have the recording page of the past webinars. You'll find it in in there. There's there's some hyperlinks. In fact, you'll find uh, links to our GitHub communities, uh, Ninja trainings, and all that. So uh, nothing really has changed. It's just that we made it all in one page. So thank you so much for being our supporters, and I'll see you until the next time. Goodbye. <laughs>